So here we are again in the Beach Baron from Caronado and for those of you who think I've sold out to X-Plane think again this is FSX, this is the Caronado Beach Baron in FSX so we're having a bit of an experiment with that. I'm not going to strictly talk about that today, I want to talk about something else which is something that's been bugging me for a while. You may recall from a few videos back when I installed these new large screens in my cockpit I was initially resigned to the fact that I was going to have to re-engineer the cockpit to make this aperture larger to fit the screens in and I kind of got away with that for a while or so I thought but I've decided that's not uh, satisfactory so I'm going to bite the bullet and today I'm going to talk about some engineering and hopefully complete it <laughs> by the end of today to um, make that work better and essentially I'm going to do what I suggested before that I would need to do which is to raise everything above the dashboard by 10 centimeters in height and uh, I've looked at ways to do this of course the most satisfactory way to do this would be to dismantle everything up here, remove all the panels take apart the structure and I mean that would be a guaranteed way to get the job done. I'm not going to do that because that's a lot of work so what I'm going to do is hopefully I've, I've looked at the, I mean it's a while since I built this frame now so you know it's a bit of archaeology to try and figure out um, what the structure is but basically and I'll show you this in close up in a minute we've got the structure that needs to be moved is supported at four points one here one here and two at the back and essentially there's two horizontal spars, I don't know what you would call those on which everything up here is supported so all I need to do in principle is to support those, remove the four bolts somehow jack those two spars up by 10 centimeters and reattach them. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. So if I just show you this in a little bit of close-up and then we'll get an idea of the method and then we'll crack on and do it. So we're just looking at this from the right hand side at the moment. This is more or less symmetrical, not exactly symmetrical because we've got the electronics mounted on the right hand side here but um, uh, and also this Throttle quad is obviously not symmetrical, but that, that's irrelevant. The mounting hardware is the same on each side. So what we have to do is, this is the horizontal bar that needs to move up. So this bar's got to move up by 10 centimeters, and to achieve that we're going to basically insert a couple of props in here at this end, and an equivalent one at the far end, and then they're going to be... Um, essentially supporting this at both ends and we'll obviously repeat this at the other side as well and then we can undo this bolt and the bolt at the far end and the equivalent to on the other side with the idea of moving this structure upwards uh, so what we're then going to do is using I suppose some offcuts of this kind of uh, timber we're going to have some two centimeter wedges and we're going to gradually jack this support up in two centimeter steps and of course we're going to have to do that incrementally two centimeters this side, two centimeters that side so we're kind of walking the frame upwards till we get to ten centimeters so we're going to need twenty of those wedges if we assume they're two centimeters high and the frame should have enough give in it that that walk-in shouldn't break anything. In fact you may remember if you watched the initial construction of this that the frame is actually cross-braced using some nylon compression straps so we'll probably slacken those off a little bit and there'll be plenty of give in the frame. Now in fact I've simplified the description a little bit of what we're going to do in fact, we're not going to undo this bolt. We're going to we're, we will undo the the rear bolt, and the spar will move up, and basically just we'll, we'll drill a new hole at the far end and rebolt it on. The problem is at this end, because this there's not enough height here. You can see that if we jack this up, this would need to go up as well, and then we'd need some sort of extension on the the top here. That's not going to happen. So in practice, we're not actually going to unbolt this. This whole thing is going to be moving up. 
and to compensate for that we're going to detach it here and we're going to put a 10 centimeter insert of this basically this kind of material in here to just lengthen that and there'll be some sort of external support to clamp that on that'll give us the extra height we need so so in one sense it's simpler because we don't undo this and more complicated because we've got to do something fiddly at the bottom okay we're at a crucial point we've got the frame jacked up now by 10 centimeters you can see we've got the wedges in there and also in there a little bit more difficult to get in there so that's a little bit precarious at the moment and so you can see on the inside of those joints that's now left a space for this 10 centimeter insert which is going to go in there it'll be a bit tidier than that when those wedges are out of the way and then we're going to bolt everything back together and at the top side of that you can see it's a different arrangement we've got to put the bolts can't, hang on, back in here can't quite see that's around the corner okay we're back mission accomplished we are done we've got the cockpit reconfigured with everything 10 centimeters higher that was relatively straightforward to do and I just got it back together and up and running I'm not sure quite how it's going to pan out just yet we'll go for a flight in a little while so what we gain obviously is we get more of the screen less of the screen is obscured by the instrument panel previously you know probably about half the middle screen was obscured by the instrument panel so we don't have that problem now we're going to get there's going to be more to see what we lose of course is the lower screen at the side which gives the illusion of in a sense better side windows you know we could actually see somewhat down as well as straight forward so time will tell if that's going to be a good trade this aircraft moving about a bit I don't know what's going on here maybe it's windy what else can I tell you well everything's further away of course it's not too far away to reach but it is a bit more of a stretch that includes all the switches the radios the throttle cords of course although as I have said numerous times I'm going to ditch these throttle cords when I can get around to it so the other thing is it's given me more headroom for the track IR which is good another consequence of this increased height particularly if I have to put my chair up slightly and you may not really appreciate this on the video once again I have a big blank space here well, it's not blank it's got lots of junk in it I can see all sorts of distracting things so I may have to refabricate the dash that I used to have on top of here I still have the dash but it's going to need to be a different shape for these monitors I might have to start from scratch or I could just put some black cloth or something carpet maybe on there so we'll see let's uh, see how it is flying first one other thing that came to light in the doing of this I noticed in this cross piece here there's a, a bit of a crack developing <laughs> and of course it strikes me that there's quite a lot of weight is carried by this this carries well one end of all the weight of everything that's overhead so it's supported in two positions one here on this cantilever and one at the back so that looked like it might fail at some point which is why I've added this vertical member here which basically goes straight down to the ground and the one at the other side so that should stop any problems with that crack developing that's not going anywhere now so what we'll do now is we'll take this up just for a spin because I'm in FSX I think I might take up the Twin Otter instead of the Beach Baron simply because I haven't got the Baron panels all configured yet so I'll get the Twin Otter up and we'll be back in just a second. So we're in New Zealand, we're in the Twin Otter, we're just approaching Milford Sound.
Need to get the flaps out. Bit of a stretch for those flaps now. Bit longer, very long. 